The Lamiaceae, otherwise known as the mint family, phonetically spelled lamb, E-A-C-A. Characteristics, these are dicots worldwide, um, wide range environmental conditions, often, often um, kind of uh, temperate though, there's a lot in the Midwest. <coughs> Mostly herbs. Occasionally these are um, shrubs or small trees. The leaves are simple. They're opposite. And uh, they're um, whorled in that each, each uh, pair of leaves is, uh, is twisted uh, from the one below it. So if you look down, you see a whorl. If you look down the stem, uh, rarely have stipules. Um, they frequently have oil glands uh, present. Uh, the flowers are bilaterally symmetrical, which means you can cut them down the middle and uh, each side is um, a reflection of the other, so uh, humans are bilaterally symmetrical. These have uh, fused sepals and fused petals, uh, so that means a calyx and corolla. And uh, the stems are square and frequently hairy. The fruit is a nut or um, a set of four little nutlets. And economically important, uh, very important in uh, flavorings, uh, basils, uh, all the mints, almost all the mints, uh, rosemary, sage, uh, marjoram, oregano, thyme, lavender, and then teak, the uh, wood teak. Key characteristics are square stems, opposite leaves, and very aromatic. So um, if you find a plant that um, has those characteristics, is a uh, good place to start looking is in the Lamiaceae. Additionally, there's frequently oil glands on the leaves. Um, they uh, often have hairy stems, and um, the flowers usually occur in the leaf axles right where the leaf joins the uh, stem. And uh, they often have a distinct uh, sort of two-lipped uh, feature. You can see down in the um, sort of lower middle of these drawings this uh, two-lipped um, aspect. And then uh, here's your um, uh, calyx of a few sepals. These are in the Lamiales. Um, pretty big family, uh, 7,000 species, uh, over 200 genera. Uh, they were called the Labiatae at one point before uh, people started saying all the families had to end in ACA. Pretty high up on the evolutionary tree were in the asterid groups uh, over um, uh, near the Solanales where uh, we've seen uh, several different uh, families that we've talked about. Notable species, uh, basil, rosemary, sage, thyme, marjoram, oregano, mint, uh, lavender, coleus, which is a, a landscaping plant. Bergamot, uh, often used for um, uh, landscaping in Iowa, it's a native, antique. And uh, interestingly, if you look at a lot of these end in uh, the species names um, are vulgaris or vulgar, um, that often uh, that is means uh, common. So these things have been around a long time. Back when uh, Linnaeus was naming things, these were all, all uh, commonly used, which probably means that people were already putting them in their gardens and using them for um, uh, seasonings and um, um, making things smell good. And additionally, we've got a couple that have a fish, fish and alice on them. And uh, that was um, sort of the, the name of the um, closet in apothecaries and um, you know the early um, medical people in the Middle Ages. Um, uh, they called their little stash of drugs and medicines their fish and al. So uh, these have been used for um, medical purposes for a long time too. Here's an edible example, uh, sweet basil, Osimum basilicum, uh, native to the tropics of Africa and Asia. The, when we grow them here, we uh, consider them annuals because they're not frost tolerant, but they uh, can be perennial in, uh, in gentler climates. Uh, they're now widely cultivated um, for as a, a crop in France, Indonesia, and, uh, southern United States, and uh, also in warmer places like Morocco, I Israel, and Egypt. Uh, very important in the um, food in the diet, um, in the seasonings of the diet in those countries. It was brought to Europe in the 1500s, um, in the U.S. in the 1600s. Um, its use as a herb is extremely widespread. Uh, it's been called the king of herbs, or the herb royale. Uh, it's prominent in Italian and Southeast Asian cuisines. Uh, there's um, a Thai restaurant in Des Moines called Cool Basil, and they have basil in many of their uh, uh, menu offerings. The uh, essential oils uh, that are extracted from these plants are used in medicine. Uh, essential doesn't mean as um, essential to somehow the life of the plant. It means as an essence. So the aromatic oils uh, that they get out of uh, these plants are used in many different applications. 
Uh, interestingly, it's folklore of the Middle Ages um, associated these plants with uh, scorpions. It's probably where the basilicum came from the, um, in the species name, as in basilisk. They um, thought if you left a little piece laying on the ground, it would turn into a scorpion. And one um, medical uh, expert from uh, the Middle Ages um, uh, declared with great confidence that if you smelled these too much, you would uh, get scorpions in your brain, which obviously would be a problem. There's many varieties today, uh, some with very different aromas. Some smell lemony. Um, others um, smell like what we expect basil to smell. Uh, some of the Middle Eastern ones are um, much more sort of peppery than uh, what we have uh, that we commonly use. Um, and then there's even a dark purple one that's used um, in landscaping and also in um, you know, like making vinegars and things that are uh, just beautiful and that purple color comes out. Uh, the aroma, uh, primary aroma that we smell is due to a product called linalool and uh, methyl chavicol. Uh, there are, however, many, many, many other um, uh, interesting compounds uh, in these plants. And uh, here you can see a, a close-up picture of a basil flower. And you can see those two lips and uh, that calyx of um, uh, fused sepals. Catnip, uh, very important. Uh, you can, uh, in the picture there, you can see those opposite leaves that are trading as they go up. They're being coming whorled as they go up the stem, but they are opposite off of a square stem. Uh, and the plants are quite hairy and, of course, uh, quite pungent. Uh, catnip is also called cat mint and cat's wart. A uh, wart just means herb, um, is a, a Middle Ages word for word. Uh, native to Central Europe and Asia. Also used, uh, is apparently very effective, a mosquito and fly repellent from uh, the oils that are extracted. Uh, however, when, when they're applied on, um, uh, to use as a mosquito and fly repellent, they don't work as well as some of the products um, on the market. But in laboratory tests uh, where they can uh, be a little more controlled, they are more successful. So um, perhaps someday we'll have uh, um, catnip mosquito repellents. I don't know if that'll drive the cats crazy or not. Uh, it is used as a tea and a food in some areas. Um, and uh, as far as cats, um, both domestic and big cats, um, you know, jaguars and things, are affected by it. However, not all cats uh, of any one group are affected. They say roughly two-thirds um, are, you know, very interested in it, and the rest of them uh, don't see anything um, uh, special or smell anything special about it. It is hereditary. If um, um, a, a mother cat has uh, kittens, it's a um, pretty good chance her kittens are going to be um, I interested that once they grow up, uh, as kittens, they are repelled by catnip. But then as they get a little older, it becomes very attractive. Um, no one knows quite exactly what it is that cats find so attractive, but they have um, determined that there's a special um, odor sensing organ in the cat's nose someplace that um, is uh, uh, where this uh, um, stimulation is occurring, and that's why cats kind of pull their teeth back a little bit um, sometimes when they're messing around with catnip because that's um, uh, optimizing the amount of odor that's hitting this um, special organ. And the rubbing and the eating um, is largely because that's going to make more of the um, odor be released, not that they're really trying to consume it. Um, cats do indeed appear uh, pretty intoxicated when they've uh, been into the nip. And uh, if they get too much, they can be aggressive. And uh, I did have a cat that uh, I eventually got, so I kept catnip away from her because uh, she just turned into a little witch once she had her little dose. Um, and the active ingredient there is uh, nepetalactone, obviously nepeta taken from um, the genus name. Horticultural species in this family, um, base, uh, coleus. Uh, which used to be called Coleus bumii. Uh, now they decided it needed a really big, long new name. Solenostomin scutellarioides has um, been uh, bred and rebred and hybridized uh, so that there's just an amazing uh, range of uh, colors and shapes and heights um, that uh, you can buy these plants in. Now, all of those plants that you see in these pictures are all um, uh, Coleus. It's now common name is Coleus. Um, we've seen a few species that um, the common name is actually the Latin name, and uh, this one is the old Latin name. They're native to the tropics, um, and they're used as annuals uh, because, again, they're not um, uh, frost tolerant. Sage uh, is uh, um, very important uh, uh, seasoning in um, most of the um, of Europe and the U.S. Um, considers this an essential 
to um, stuffing on Thanksgiving and, and a lot of other um, things. Um, however, the word sage is applied to many, many species. So this is the common garden sage. Um, there are other things like the sage of the North American natives use sage and um, they would make um, uh, several different medicines and uh, smoke um, from it to uh, purify and do different things. And that's an entirely different species. It's in the sunflower family, uh, Artemisia and Tridentata. Um, this one is, uh, has its own set of folklore. Uh, it was thought to ward off evil and cure snake bites and increase fertility, ward off the plague. Um, you know, again, the, the, what we've seen many, many times that um, these um, medicinals have um, this fantastically wide range of things they're supposed to do, a couple of which are probably valid and the rest are um, not. Uh, it's also used in or, uh, for an ornamental, um, for um, landscaping here and there. The um, essential oils that you get out of it are um, city oil, borne oil, and thujone. Um, there's also got a wide range of polyphenols, alkaloids, and glycosides that are not part of the essential oils that are extracted from it, but they are part of the seasonings. And on the bottom picture there, you can see the bottom of a leaf. And what those are are these uh, hairs that have a gland at the end of them containing um, these um, interesting smelling compounds and uh, that type of structure is called a trichome. Now here's some Iowa natives. There's a lot in Iowa. I figure at least 40 and uh, probably more. Um, a lot of them um, important prairie species but also uh, woodland and savanna species. Um, the wild uh, bergamot, uh, the spotted bee balm, Virginia mountain mint, slender mountain mint, germander, anise hyssop, wild mint, a mad dog skullcap. Uh, just a few of them. Uh, the mad dog was in that the skull cap thought it was going to um, uh, cure you if you got rabies and unfortunately didn't work. So in the photograph here is a photograph of uh, Monarda punctata, spotted bee balm, also called horse mint and a couple others. Um, but lovely little plant and uh, very useful in landscaping, doesn't get too big. Um, you can see the um, flowers in the axles there, leaf axles and can't get a good look at the stems, but uh, they are indeed square and uh, the flowers have that uh, distinctive lip look to them. Here's Monarda fistulosa, another uh, Monarda in the same uh, genus as the one I just showed you. Um, it has interesting, here's a nice example of coevolution. Here's a hummingbird um, uh, clear wing moth. Um, it's called a hummingbird moth that uh, is using his little proboscis to get down uh, into the bottom of that flower to get some nectar, uh, which he can do hovering. Uh, I had a lot of fun taking that picture. Um, this species is also called um, wild bergamot or uh, bee balm. And here's another nice one, a germander, um, Toycrium canadens. Uh, you can see over here on the, on the right side, square stem and uh, that distinctive lip uh, look to the flowers. Uh, this is a nice landscaping plant, although don't plant it if you ever want to get rid of it because uh, it's very difficult. Uh, it's got an extensive root system that um, doesn't, doesn't want to go away. And uh, Slender Mountain Mint. Uh, this is my dog Maggie. I take a lot of pictures of her in front of um, plants so uh, people can get perspective on height. Uh, a lot of prairie plants get about five foot tall and people tend to ignore that when they plant them. So. Uh, here's Slender Mountain Mint in the background, Pignanthemum tenuifolium. <coughs> and in the front um, is uh, Lobelia uh, syphilitica, which is uh, not <coughs> in the mint family. Toxicity, uh, as always, a dose makes a poison. Uh, there is a methyl chavicol, which I mentioned as um, a component in um, basil. And uh, its uh, fancy name is estragol. And um, it's a component in many uh, essential oils in the Lamiaceae at very low levels. It's a suspected carcinogen at high doses, but this is literally thousands of times uh, the dose that uh, would be found in um, uh, a typical um, pesto dinner. There's another one that's uh, often used, uh, pennyroyal, used uh, in aromatherapy and also as uh, attempted at insecticides, um, or at least a repellent for insects, uh, Mentham pulegium. Um, as little as an ounce taken internally can lead to death. It, um, uh, some um, um, herbal recommendations um, in, include, uh, suggest um, ingesting this plant um, for a variety of different uh, reasons. And um, uh, so if people get the idea that a little bit will work, then more will be better. Um, it turns out um, a little bit more and poof, you're gone because it's uh, taken out your liver. <coughs> 
The active ingredient there is pelogony or pulagone. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. And it converts to methofuran, which is what uh, affects your liver. And uh, many of these species are used um, as uh, these the odor um, characteristics are used as insecticides and fungicides. And indeed, that's probably why these co compounds are present, that the plants are, prying, are trying to protect themselves from insects and fungi. So um, that was the intent. Uh, it's just trying to extrapolate from uh, what a plant can do uh, on its own versus harvesting enough to actually keep insects out of your pantry or whatever. For more information, uh, there's a lot of folklore in uh, Annie's, Remedy, Annie's Remedies. Um, a couple of nice general ones. There's one in Montana, Plant Life. Uh, University of Texas has uh, quite a bit about mints. And then, of course, Wikipedia has uh, most of these uh, plants have their own page in addition to the Lamiaceae. That concludes uh, the Lamiaceae.